Some of the top stories that we're following on this Sunday. Recovery efforts continue in Ketchikan exactly one week after a landslide killed a longtime resident, injured three others, destroyed multiple homes and caused the evacuation of about 60 homes. Those evacuations have dwindled to less than 10 as crews continue to gradually and safely restore power to the area that's directly impacted by the landslide. Hi and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Gabe Strong, a video producer and DP based in Juneau, Alaska. The area of Alaska that I live in is known as the Inside Passage or Southeast Alaska. Each summer, cruise ships come up from Seattle and bring almost 2 million visitors. If you took the population of all the towns in this region and combined them together, you'd barely have 70,000 people. And this summer, we've had some tough events here in Southeast. Ketchikan had a landslide. A submarine cable was damaged, which caused Sitka to lose all internet, cell phone, and texting ability. And here in Juneau, we were the victims of a glacial outburst flood. We've been having these for a few years now, but in the past they've just flooded a couple roads and maybe a house or two along the river. This time, it flooded hundreds of homes as the flooding just seems to be getting worse each year. With all these problems, I decided recently to purchase a Starlink system for home internet. Having another option different from local utilities seemed like it might be a good thing. As a video producer, I'm often uploading large files to clients, so I'm always looking for internet that's faster and Starlink is both cheaper and faster than what I can get in my part of Alaska. After you hook everything up, you must sign up online for an account with Starlink. In my area, it's $90 a month, which is cheaper than any of the local options. But after I signed up, it told me it sent me a link to my email for me to verify that I wanted to sign up. The only problem was when I checked my email, I didn't see any such link. Finally, I thought to check in my junk mail, and sure enough, the link to verify my Starlink account was there, but what really caught my attention was the email right below the one from Starlink in my junk mail folder. So I put in a bid on this job and I actually got it. If you're interested in the numbers, comment below and I can tell you what I bid for this particular job. So now I'm at the airport and I'll be traveling to three different locations, Sitka, Ketchikan, and Skagway, and doing a three minute video profile of each city. These videos will be going on a travel agent's website and he will be trying to sell cruises to Southeast Alaska. As I said, we have almost 2 million visitors to this part of Alaska each summer. As a general rule, I'll have between 6 and 8 hours in each town to make the video because I'll be flying there in the morning and flying home at night. So I'm traveling pretty light. I've got my FX6 and extra lens and a backpack with a drone in it and a lav mic. No lighting at all. And the only check bag I have is for my tripod. I don't rig my FX6 out like a lot of people I see. One of the reasons I bought this camera was because it's so small and I don't need to put a matte box on it as it already has internal NDs. And I don't need to put a V-mount battery on back because just the regular batteries will last for hours. I know everyone's different, but for me I just like to keep things simple, especially on shoots like this. Alright, here's my ride everyone. So. We'll see you on the other side. So this is a pretty quick jet flight, only about 20 minutes from Juneau to Sitka. Yeah. Yeah. All right, had a good flight. Got to just pick up the tripod here. And I have about six, maybe seven hours to shoot this piece. I'm going to need to have an introduction and a conclusion from my local tour guide, as well as four different locations that we highlight as places that you might want to visit if you take a cruise to this town. So lots to do and not a lot of time to do it, so let's get to it. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I didn't get a lot of chances to shoot BTS as I was pretty busy today, but one of the things I did get to do was drive a golf cart up and down the mountain. Yeah, you don't see a view like that from any golf courses. There's a golf course in Sitka called Sea Mountain Golf Course. And that was just one of our six stops in Sitka as I was running all over town trying to get this video shot before my jet left. Cruises, because if you think it looks good now, wait till you see it in person. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for exploring Sitka with me today. I sincerely hope you have a chance to come see it for yourself. 
book through Kyoli Cruises because if you think it looks good now, wait till you see it in person. All right, day two, here we go again. This time we're headed to Ketchikan. Again, we'll have about eight hours on the ground in Ketchikan. We'll land down there at about nine o'clock in the morning and be headed back around six o'clock. A little bit longer flight this time, around 45 minutes of flight time. Again, we'll have to hurry to get everything done. So let's head through security. Well, here we are heading outside and there's my ride. Again, I've tried to pick days that it wasn't raining, which is kind of hard to do in Southeast Alaska, but I got lucky. Ketchikan especially has so much rain that it's really hard to find a day that isn't raining. So I'm glad that I got a day like this to go shoot in Ketchikan. Interestingly, in Ketchikan, after you get off the jet, you have to ride a ferry to get to the main part of town. The airport is actually built on an island and there's really nothing else out there except for the airport. So if you want to do anything, you must pay to ride a ferry, which is operated by the city, from the airport of Ketchikan to the mainland where the town of Ketchikan is located. So I'm jumping on the ferry right now it runs about every 20 minutes back and forth and we're going to run across to Ketchikan and see if we can get all this stuff shot in the next few hours. Welcome to Ketchikan. My name is Katherine Tatsuda and my family has lived here for over 100 years. I'm excited to take you around town today and show you a few of my favorite places. One of the first things that you will see when you get off of the cruise ship is this beautiful view right behind me that includes the Ketchikan sign. So here I am set up at the Totem Heritage Center in Ketchikan. With the extremely limited time I have to shoot these, my ability to get BTS is pretty limited. So I figured let's take a look at some of the completed segments. Be sure to stop by Creek Street while you're in Ketchikan. It is Ketchikan's historic red light district where both salmon and men came to spawn. Now it's filled with locally owned shops, art galleries, totem poles, and salmon and otters playing in Ketchikan Creek. A short walk from Creek Street along Married Man's Trail will lead you farther up Ketchikan Creek to a small set of rapids where you can view salmon swimming upstream to spawn. Ketchikan is known for its millions of salmon that come back every single year. You don't want to miss out on this. With over 80 totem poles, Ketchikan is home to the largest collection of American natives. So today's trip is a little different. There's no jet to Skagway. Skagway is too small and doesn't have a big enough airport, so we're flying in a small plane. Now, we had barely been in the air a few minutes before I looked out the window and saw this. I couldn't see more than a foot in any direction. Kind of nerve-wracking for sure, and I was glad that I had a good pilot and they had the 3D terrain avoidance on this plane, but still, it was a little sketchy. Well, I made it to Skagway and the weather is making up for the three nice days I had in Ketchikan, Sitka, and Juneau by raining on me the whole time. As a matter of fact, my FX6 started flashing an error message at me. Basically, the FX6 will tell you you have an incompatible accessory attached to your hot shoe, even though you have nothing attached to it. This happens in really wet situations, even if you have the cap on the hot shoe. This isn't ideal because with that message on the screen, you lose the ability to tap to focus. Even with that setback, I was able to get everything shot that I needed. But when I showed up at the airport, they told me the fog had socked me in so badly that I was stuck in Skagway for the night. Now Skagway is very small and the large hotel that is there had just closed for the season. I thought I might be sleeping in the car for the night, but I was able to find a room available for rent. It was basically a bed with about two feet on each side of it. Barely enough room to go in and sleep, but that's all I really needed. A 
Luckily today the weather's cleared up enough that I'm able to fly home. This was the last location I had to travel to to complete this project. The fact that this YouTube video is out means I've completed this job. So once again, let's take a look back at some of the completed segments from this portion of the project. Once again, one of the best parades I've ever seen. You are unbelievable. Oh, that's worth its weight in gold right there. After striking it rich at Alaska 360, learn about the Iditarod sled dog. So this is complicated. Gotta think. In 1898, Skagway had over 80 different bars, brothels, and go ahead. This is one of the greatest parades I've ever seen. Go ahead. No, you're good. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're live here in Skagway. No. Here, are you heading through? Oh, no, I got a bet, so I mean, I, I'd like you, please. I don't want to ruin your timing. During the Gold Rush, Skagway had over 80 different bars, brothels, and gaming parlors, and while unfortunately most of them closed, we do have one beautifully preserved over here at the Red Onion Saloon, where they will still take you upstairs today for a tour. <sighs> no. Where their costumed charactered madams will take you upstairs for a tour of the old brothel. Works for me. And then you can go downstairs and get something fresh to eat. <laughs> Get the clam chowder upstairs, the, the uh, <laughs> I don't know. Where their tour guides, their famous madams, will take you upstairs to show you the old facilities and hopefully give you a good time while you're up there. Where they'll still take you upstairs for about 15 minutes. Yeah, I don't know what they do for the other 12 and a half, cuddle. <laughs> All right. Really doesn't match the character I've been doing, but had I committed to this the entire time, it would have really been great. For one of the mess, oh, dang it. We were so, so close. That was so good. We were so <laughs> Same thing except the finish. <laughs> well, yeah, the finish is usually where I mess up.